Hello and welcome back to my channel. My name is Kika and today I'm gonna share some tips on how to add more click appeal to your Instagram photos. Oh yes, Instagram, oh, we have been through a lot and it's not a lot, a lot. And it's still one of my dearest platforms and I definitely still believe that it is possible to grow on Instagram with pretty picture, beautiful photos, creative, out-of-the-box ideas. And these tips that I'm gonna share today is really observations that I have done in the past, well, four and a half years, almost, no, five years, can that be? Well, four plus years anyways, of being on Instagram and putting lots of effort in. And I really want to share these little nuggets of gold with you so that you can make sure that whatever photos you're taking and if your goal is to build your business or get better product photography or just get a little bit more buzz and people interested in your photos, you can do that with these tips. Tip number one is to make it easy to read. The thing you have to keep in mind at all times when you're taking photos specifically for Instagram. So remember now, now we're talking about photos that work specifically well for Instagram, the platform. So there are lots of photography styles out there and this is not to say that other types of photos aren't as good or as valuable. Now I'm really giving tips that are specifically for Instagram. So just wanted to say that before we got into it. So on Instagram, because the photos usually appear as small thumbnails, you want to make sure that it really works as a small photo. So when people just see it at that little thumbnail size and that it's just really easy to read so that it's very obvious what is going on in the photo. So to give you a little bit of an example and sort of start with the opposite. So this photo, for example, there isn't really anything for the eye to naturally focus on. Everything in the frame kind of feels like it's equally important or you could argue equally unimportant. So there's no really clear hero of the photo. And my tip is definitely to be very clear with this, that if you have something that you're taking a photo of, a subject, to really make sure that this pops in your photo. Which leads us to the next tip, which is to be super mindful about your backgrounds. So I see so often a photo that is really nice and it's a nice idea. There is some subject matter or some really focus of the photo, but then there's a cluttered background and it's just really hard to see what it is. So a few tips how you could make your thing, so the hero of the photo, <laughs> pop more. First of all, you could use color contrast. So to make sure that if you're taking a photo of something that is darker to have a lighter background, or you could also make sure to have really good light on that photo. So here's an example of a photo I took a few years ago and I was really standing up against the wall and I sort of blend in. Well, just by taking a step further out from the wall, you can see how the light is hitting me and there's more depth and it's just easier to see what is going on. And it's just like a better photo. Another trick to also make the photo easier to read and just stand out from the background is think about using very clear shapes. So for example, this photo, you can see that the shapes are very strong and visually clear. So again, it just makes it easier to read and immediately understand what is going on in the photo. Tip number three, use a cohesive color palette. I think people on Instagram are very trend conscious because every time I post a photo where there's some color coordination going and it just has a very cohesive color palette, those photos tend to work really well. So this is something to keep in mind that when you're doing photos for Instagram to try to keep to a pretty minimal color palette. So for example, this photo, you can see how these purple and kind of red orangey hues they really get repeated in everything or almost everything in all the elements in this photo and it just makes for such a rich photo and it's just about being very intentional with your elements and the colors of them and I for one love colors and I just love to think of combining different colors and in photos what different backgrounds and even the outfits and the props and the locations and everything so this is something you want to pay attention to. Moving on to the next tip, which is one that I feel like I 
probably talk about in every photo tips video I make, but I'm gonna say it once again because repetition is truly the king or queen, no, queen, <laughs> queen. <laughs> no, mother of all learning. That's how the saying goes, I think, in English. Um, well, I'm of course talking about textures. Having those textures in your photo, so that means avoiding very flat and dull surfaces. So when you're taking a photo of something that is on a table, to think about maybe using an old wooden table with some cracks and just has that nice texture, or you could even add your own texture by sprinkling some dried flowers on that table and just make it come more alive. And again, bring that three-dimensionality into it because remember, we want to create that depth because that will then suck the viewer in and will create that click appeal because there's just like this magnetic power in your photo. All right, and we are down to the last tip, which is think about the story you are telling. So I am a huge lover of telling stories and I'm always trying to think of, even if it's a photo that is sort of set up and kind of staged, thinking of what is happening in this situation and how can I make the story come more alive with very small elements and maybe small changes in poses and how elements are in relation to each other. One very concrete tip that you might have heard me mention before is showing some human presence. So if you're taking a photo where you're standing on a chair, for example, and you have something laid out on a table to show a little bit of your feet, maybe show a hand. So you just get that human presence. Often I find that we as humans, we really relate to other humans. So if there is some human presence in that photo, it's just easier to relate with whatever is going on in the photo. All right, I hope you enjoyed these tips in my class, the Self-Taught to Self-Employed Masterclass. In the module about Instagram success, we go really, really deep and dive into so many of the small technicalities and also how to craft your own content plan and also how to create a content plan for explosive growth. So in the class, I share my own formula that has worked and has allowed me to create photos that get over 20,000 likes and over 10,000 likes on a regular basis. And this is really not such a mystery science. Um, there is some formulas and some things to take into consideration. So if you're interested in learning more about this and if you found these tips valuable, uh, I hope you'll come and check it out. All right, I hope you enjoyed this video and can't wait to see what you create on Instagram. I'd love to see your account. So please let us know your Instagram name and handle in the comments below. Also, um, to make it a little bit easier, you can put the link. So whatever your handle is that you put the URL also so we can just go and click immediately on it so you put like www.instagram.com and then forward slash and then you just put your name so mine is for example Instagram instagram.com forward slash kutubakika so that just makes it a little bit easier for us to come and check out your Instagram account all right thank you so much I will see you guys and take care bye hello hello a bee in my bonnet hello there's a bee in my bonnet, hello, hello, a bee in my bonnet, hello.